So my name is Sabri. I lead the RMD department at Euranova. Um, so first of all, I would like to, to tell you a story. Um, it was two years ago uh, when I was working for uh, one of the biggest banks in Western Europe. And we were working on, on the clickstream analytics. And we found out that we needed to have 10 table extract for uh, using the data for classification of user. So we went to the data warehouse guy and we asked for those 10 tables. And the first thing they, tell, they told us was, well, it's great, we have those 10 tables. Nice, so how long does it take to have those tables in my database there? Well, more or less 900 main days. And that's typical actually. So, so huge, just for, pro for extracting 10 tables and, and provisioning some size IQ database, so much time. And actually, that's typical if you don't have the right processes, the right tools, the right architecture, the right things in place. And that's exactly the purpose of what I'm showing you here. It's about having a global picture of the data architecture. What are all the different components and how to organize the data around, around the central piece of, of architecture. So first of all, um, for most of the customers I've seen so far, most of them are starting the digital transformation process, mainly because they would like to create new revenue outside of their core business. They would like to better sell, for instance, by, by a better segmentation of user, or reduce the cost for a better or by better operates. And all those use cases have in common the fact that data is a few. So what they do usually, we start by your proof of concept, taking few data, showing that using big data and Hadoop things, we can have a very strong proof concept, and you show that indeed there is a value. At the end of the day, you end up with a proof concept showing that there is a value entering into big data or data analytics. But then you need to face the reality. You have this proof concept, and the first things to do to create really the value it's what we call the industrialization, making it operational. And then if you need to do that, you have usually three main challenges that you need to fix. The first one is the industrialization itself. How to automate the data ingestion, how to retrain automatically the model, defining whether there is still valid, there is still accurate enough to continue the processing making consume the inside by the service organization, so basically make it it's runnable. The second challenge is about the data organization itself. Usually when you have this small data set that you have considered for the data analytics, proof concept, you need to find it back, where did it come from? But well, the data comes from there, but is it really the golden source? Is it really updated correctly? Is it really consistent comparing to the real golden source. And then you realize that, in, at least this is what I've seen so far in most of the customer I've been working in, the service facing is very well organized. There is a clear SOA architecture. But if you look at the back end in terms of data, well, the data is fed by another application, and this application is fed by partially by Data Mart and, and partially by other application. And you have these spaghetti plates of ETLs. So even if from a service point of view, it's really nicely designed and a really nice interface, from a database point of view, it's a mess. And then you need to define the right organization of the data for avoiding those kind of things. And then, of course, the migration of your use case will highly depend on the clearness of the situation. And the last challenge is integrating the service and data organization. Today, most of the people are organizing itself into data organization, usually led by a chief data officer. That includes data warehouse, data lab, data lake. And you have the service organization with the digital platform or the microservices and all the service base. But how are you going to integrate the data you have there in the data organization into the service organization? Are you going to put an ESB? Are you going to expose thousands of, of terabytes of data through REST API, how are you going to do that? And how are you going to still guarantee the consistency of the data all along the process? And this is a very important question. Um, 
with the data architecture we propose, this is exactly and precisely the three main challenge we try to tackle here. So, a data architecture vision is this. It's a global picture, global description, defining how you are going to collect, store, index, govern, expose, analyze the data within your IT uh, environment. And let's be clear here, the scope here is really an enterprise scope. So the aim is not to have a public cloud somewhere and exchanging data with someone else. It's really within an enterprise, within the company, we would like to uh, collect, store, extract, analyze the data. And if you do that, you should be able to answer all the questions you usually ask when you are into an IT system. Um, I'm not going to read that slide, just to show you what was the initial point for designing this architecture. We are working for that bank, and they had listed the 10 pain points that was the showstopper for their digital transformation. And actually we were working on those pain points, and we quickly realized, a uh, pain point about data in IT. And we quickly realized that if we design something that resolves those pain points, you actually create a lot of capabilities for supporting your digital transformation and supporting your time to market when uh, it's a matter about using data and analytics. Just to give you the intuition behind what we have designed so far, let's come back beginning of, of uh, early 2000 when we were speaking about SOA and let me take the analogy of service-oriented architecture. At the time, you had services separated by functional blocks, exchanging requests by point-to-point -point connection, point-to-point -point requests. And you know that all the main issue we had with point-to-point -point architecture was difficulties for tracking the lineage of the service call, maintenance, running costs, and all those things. The software engineer proposed to have an ESB for providing a median, a separation between service provider and service requester. Okay, so keep this in mind, and let's come back on the data now. This picture comes from LinkedIn, a blog post they published in 2015, and they explain how the data flows were uh, executed between the different applications. So the blue line here are not calls, it's data flows. And they explained that it was a bit of a mess, and they had this spaghetti plate of ETL feeding database from application to, to another. And what they explained there is that the running cost was just huge, because impossible to track the lineage, and by the way, for implementing GDPR there in terms of lineage, it's very difficult, and impossible to track the consistency of the data, because sometimes one application aggregates at months, the other at week, the same data, and then you, you reuse those data into a third one, so consistency was very difficult to maintain. And of course, if you integrate a new application, let's say custom analytics, in that mess, well, you need to drive still new ETLs for feeding this application and new ETLs for consuming the insights. So you increase the global complexity. So the running costs are just exploding. And by the way, this is the situation I have seen in every consumer, uh, customer I have seen so far. Everybody has the same situation. As soon as you have started by a set of house and starting creating application, you have the same situation. So what... Li uh, what LinkedIn proposed at the time, it was to, well, and I come back to the picture of the SOA analogy with the ESB, they proposed to have a stream data platform. And they proposed to separate data producer from data consumer. And using all the architecture pattern from event-driven architecture for doing that. So now you have streams of data and every data source, the provider, has one topic. And you can consume them a topic or many topics as you want. And you can reapply with a pub sub approach the, the global separation between producer and consumer. But still, there is a, a lot of questions and challenges that remains open, like the governance, like the fact that when you consume data, usually you consume it in a slightly different way that has been emitted. You still need to define how you are going to make analytics. How are you going to make a difference between data warehouse and data lake? Are you going to feed both? Are you going to make a decision about one or the other? There is still a lot of questions. So we started from there and we propose the global organization here. So I will just quickly summarize the architecture. And of course, with the time I have, I cannot delve into detail. 
So if you're interested to speak or to discuss about in and out of this architecture, let's take a coffee afterwards and we we'll discuss. So basically, here, we have the same concept of this data collector, which makes the separation between data provider and data consumer. So every provider should then send the data to the central collector. You can, as a consumer, then register to a specific topic. One provider, one topic. As a consumer, you can register to a topic and apply a transformation, like streaming transformation, which contains traditional relational operator like filter, project, join, and so on. So you can apply transformation for defining what exactly you would like to have. And afterwards, after transformation, we materialized the transformed data into the database locally here. By doing that, we implement the concept of materialized derived view. It's derived because it's not the same as the original, and it's materialized because we physically materialized the view there. At the end of the day, if you look at that, it's more or less look like a master data management system, but fully distributed. One important component is the historical storage layer. It's a, the data lake. Everything actually is subscribed to every topic, and everything that transits to the bus will be uh, written there. And in the event-driven architecture, it implements a pattern called the event sourcing. That means that if any other consumer would like to have the history of what has been done or what has been transported here, you can see query here the historical data and feed the different consumer. There is this important governance stack in which you have the lineage tracking, access policy, and what we call the corporate information model, which is nothing else than a kind of business ontology on which we'll be able to have this business glossary linked to the physical data. Well, there is many things to explain here and to debate. Of course, we have no time. Uh, I will be glad to answer your question later. So, in summary, um, of course, data is, in digital transformation for enterprise, the most important asset. And the data organization and the way you organize the data is key in the transformation success. And, well, it's more what I've shown in here. It's more a kind of meta architecture. It will be customized. We have customized this architecture for um, automotive industry, for the connected car. It was much more real-time, and there was some kind of region and, and continental constraints, so we need to customize a few things. But still, it's a meta-architecture that needs to be customized. And of course, when you design things now, we can start by small components to put in place and making it evolve, but having the big picture and the target in mind is very important. Thank you.